Hello, I'm going to go over some basics of making a plugin and creating your own GUI and your st own stack themes to work native on iOS, Mac OS X, Windows, Linux, or anything else that deploys from live code. So, like if you're in live code and you want to create a new stack, you'd go up and create a new stack. And it gives you a very blank white canvas, you know, some place to start new. But it necessarily might not get you in the ballpark of where you actually want to be because this is very boring and a lot of times I want to do something where I want to make it very Mac like or very, very much look like an iPhone or an iPad application and a lot of people say well it actually can't do that there's not native support for that actually there is and it's all built into live code and you can use things called the template stack the template graphic and you can set properties and you can do it all by script and everyone can do it it's just either you forgot how to or you never knew how to. So I'm going to show you a very basic thing on how you can get started and do so by building your own plugins. So let's take this plugin I have here. Let's call it Test123. And I'm going to create a very basic uh, Mac thing. I was going to get more into the iPhone or iPad, but I have signed a non disclosed agreement with RunRev until the Rev Mobile or the mobile iOS is released to not really comment or show any tutorials on until it's officially released or they've given me the okay I guess non disclosed is a non disclosed so I create a stack for a Mac that gives me this bottom bar and it gives me a very basic uh, Mac OS 10.5, 10.6 back gray background which all this information can be found on Apple's developer site to get the uh, right colors actually they actually have a color palette that you can insert into your color area the bottom area is built using uh, template graphics and using the gradient tool built into live code so you can do this exact same thing and if you look at that's a major difference. Now you can do this every time out but if you were trying to get this bottom gradient to look right it's hard to make it look the same all the time. So once you have it looking perfect script it and build yourself a real good plugin and you can do it fast. So let's take a look at how you would do a plugin uh, of a creating GUI and creating windows. So let me open the dictionary real fast. It takes a little time when you got these screen captures because of probably memory. Come on, you can open. <laughs> there we go. And here we go, template. All you have to do is start typing temp and you'll get it up in the dictionary. And you get template audio, template button, template card, template field, graphic, template player, stack, you name it. And all you have to do is when you do this is set properties so it's very basic all the information is in the dictionary and you, you can also see up here and let me click on it because then you'll see it on the screen capture also see and then click on that so all this stuff that's in this toolbar built in a live code all these buttons and let's just throw a few of them up here this is only a few of them a couple check boxes or the tab bar. All these are buttons built with live code. You can build similar looking buttons or you can build custom buttons using template button or even using template graphic and you can even insert the scripts so it's ready to script. So you can do everything the same and you can do the same with the iPad and iPhone. Um, here's a field. You can also set up fields but if you say if you're working with the mobile, if you notice this here, this data grid uh, built by Trevor, this is a grouped control built with a bunch of objects. So this here is very much like building a custom uh, property, the data grid. And actually, if you're in uh, the iPhone, you wouldn't actually use this list field. A lot of people do get confused by a scrolling list field being much like the Apple browser object. The Apple browser object, if you actually look at the code that creates it, either using bash code or using Xcode, 
it's more like Trevor's data grid. It's a data object. Each one of those rows with text on it and all that stuff is an array of information inserted into a data object. It's not a list field, so don't even try to do a list field because the native thing in iOS, it's more like a data grid. And you can do it yourself and you can script it by doing some touch syntax by vscroll and a little bit of animation. You can even use Malte's animation engine with the mobile. So once OneDrive gives me the okay to do some uh, tutorials on the live code mobile, I'll show you how to do one of those. But right now, let's uh, go into doing, and let's just get rid of this stack, your own plugin. So let's just use the stack that I had here, and let's build a template stack. We'll just add a simple revolution button, simple live code field, and let's program it. And let's build a template stack. And this should pop up my script editor any second here. And there we go. And I'm using Jerry's uh, Remo, which used to be called TREV, to also save me time. Let's do a simple on mouse up. You could do a command to do this for you, but we're just going to do it on mouse up. I'll show you how simple it can be done. And I believe our stack wasn't saved. Well, it's saved now. <laughs> and uh, let's do oops, reset the template. Jury's autos has autocomplete on his editor. And uh, so you get some words to pop up. So first we're going to do is reset the template stack. What I'm going to do is create stack. Come on. And then we're going to put a setting in there. So let's say we're going to say set the background color. So background behavior, but we want color. Set the background color of the Actually, it's simpler to do this for me. Of the template stack 2. And the reason I know I can do background colors, if we bring up the inspector, anything that's on this property palette of this inspector can be set to a template object. So we're going to set this background color. And we're going to take like a goofy color. Let's take something like this red. You know, no one's going to really make a red gooey window. But just to show you that, you know, here it is. So I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. And that little clipboard tool is originally designed for Objective-C. So we have to remove some of these properties. All I need are the triple set numbers. And boom, that will now create a goofy red looking window. But I've also added a field here so we can add a name to our stack. So let's call that field stuff. And let's just copy that. So I'm going to put the text of that field. Put the text of field. Boom. Of stack. Into a variable called, well, let's call it tname. And that's test123. So I can just say test123. Now what happens if that field is empty and you still push the button? So if tname equals EMT empty, then let's just exit to top. Exit to top means it won't do anything. It will exit this mouse up. And the last thing we have to do then is take tname here. So create stack and add it tname which is whatever's in the variable. So let's try it. So let's go into run mode. Boom. And let's label this uh, Hello World. Very simple. And let's create that. And boom, there you go. We have a Hello World stack created for us. And then, you know, you can do anything. Obviously, you're not going to create a red window. Who the hell is going to create a red window? But you can see the point here is now we can make anything like that. We can create the same kind of stack. You can create uh, objects that have the native 
iPhone GUI and trust me you can do it by using template stacks by setting properties you can get all that stuff to do it it's very simple and I just got you in the ballpark with a very simple thing and every time you want to set another property just put another property below it like maybe we want to do is set the resizing or actually I think it's called live resizing live live resizing and let's just copy this right here to true okay and we save that so let's try that one so let's call this hello world number two and we hit that and we just take the stack here and boom it's live resizing see so that's all you have to do is keep adding properties to whatever you're doing and build yourself a plugin stack and you can do it multiple times you can do the same thing with buttons you can do gradients you can do much of the stuff you can do that makes it look like native iOS you think you can't but you can and I will show you that once RunRev gives me the okay to show you that I'll show it to you it's really cool I have actually a lot of themes already pre-built that uh, can do that you can insert GUI you can insert scripts it's amazing and if you're gonna do it more than ten times I think put it in a plugin so you can do the same thing. Uh, one tip though you should do is lock the screen and unlock the screen. So obviously this is just one thing here. But you could add, uh, insert uh, a graphic, uh, do a template graphic. And you know it gets more difficult with the mouse up. A after a while you might want to do like a, something like a command. And I always do mine. let's say like uh, if I did like a graphic bar at the bottom I'd do a command down there and I'd oops C O M M I spelled command wrong <laughs> and then you put all your script in here for maybe doing the graphics so then it'd be easier is like maybe after you created the stack, whatever, reset the template stack. You can, uh, oops, you would do it before actually creating the template stack. You would maybe insert this in there and whatever code that's in there, boom, 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 boom. But we don't have a lot of time because there is a time limit on YouTube videos. So I'm going to end it here. But you can see the possibilities and you can just keep creating your own things. But when you think it's not possible, it is possible. Um, because live code itself is created all these objects in its toolbar and all the stuff uh, you see in live code is actually scripted in live code the whole IDE and you can do that and you can actually view all its code if you click this item so check that out and uh, have fun but you can do all this stuff it's not very hard so hopefully this got you uh, in the ballpark of how to create your own stuff and your own plugins. Have fun.